Hey friends, it's Sonya Miller with Junk Monkey Paint Company and welcome back to my channel where we have lots of fun playing in paint. This right here is where it all started. On the edge of the world, a rock in the middle of the North Atlantic, this is where I'm from. And here my friends, repurposing and reusing is a necessity. My name is Sonya Miller and over the past decade, I've built an international business right here from these roots. And I've brought together a community of over 100,000 creatives and it's still growing. Thrifting, picking, flipping is what I do. And I've made an actual living on what other people have donated, thrown out, or given away. I paint furniture. I love doing inside home projects, outside home projects. There really isn't nothing that a little paint can't fix or refresh. And I am on a mission to prove that to everybody out there. When I first moved to the US with my husband, I will tell you that starting over was not easy. In a place where nobody knows you and money was really, really tight at that time. But with the help of this brush that I'm holding in my hand and a special paint that we went on to create together, my new home became much more comfortable over time and it truly gave me a purpose and I honestly feel I found my calling. I have arrived, this is it. So two things stood out to me when I first moved to Pennsylvania. A definite need to fly back home to see my family who I missed dearly and a need at the same time to make my new surroundings beautiful. I want it to be comfortable and cozy. I don't think no matter what country you're from, that always stays the same. So when I couldn't afford a plane ticket to go back home to the island, I had to get creative with my talents. I was always a crafty person growing up, so I went to that. And since I had moved to Pennsylvania, I found that I really enjoyed barn auctions, thrifting, and there was a lot of free furniture I was finding by the side of the road. And I definitely subscribed to the thinking that one person's junk is another person's treasure. One time I found a wooden dresser at an auction. Nobody wanted to raise their cart and get it, and I did, and I took it home. And it's deals like that that really just fueled me to push further. So I painted all the stuff in my house beautiful and filled it and loved it, and at that point I had no more space, so I decided to continue to do what I loved, but start selling my upcycles and painted furniture online for other people to enjoy. I hope they would enjoy it and they sure did enjoy it. So in the evenings while my husband worked, by the way, fast forward to today, Matt was able to quit his job and join me in the paint world. But at that time, I would come home from work, get out of my dress clothes, sit on the garage floor to paint, could not wait to get home to do this. Furniture really became my friends. And I'm gonna tell you, they were the nicest friends. Furniture was so kind to me. So my things sold fast and I was able to fill a wooden box that I kept. It once held pencils and now I was putting all my cash that I was making for my sales into it. I still have kept that box to this day and it means the world to me. After I returned from that trip home, I kept up my painting and I found myself dreaming that, wow, I could possibly do this full time. I wanna do this full time. So I would come home from work, take off my high heels, put on my stretchy pants, meet strangers in parking lots, and eventually all that led to a storefront. I realized I needed one. So I held a trash the corporate suit event. I quit my corporate job. I tossed my business cards in the air and I said goodbye to the rat race. And I have never since looked back. Now I should tell you as part of this story that the cost of furniture paint was out of my reach at that time because my budget dictated the pieces that I could work on and because my budget was so tiny I mean it was squeaky tiny I didn't always have the luxury to work on wooden furniture which is ideal but I was painting and flipping anything and everything that I could get my hands on who knows what it was made of but I was just happy to have it and I also learned that all paints are not created equal they are not the same and they don't always stick so one day I took a drive 45 minutes one way to the nearest store with a specialty furniture paint and I left empty handed because I couldn't afford to buy not even one single color. My supportive husband said, I'm going to try and make some paint for you. And I thought, what? Make paint? Who does that? Who, who on earth knows how to make paint? Well, we made our first batch of what we now call junk monkey paint, and it was absolutely life-changing in so many ways. Number one, our kitchen backsplash will never be the same. I can definitely tell you that, and I have the paint splatters to prove it. But with my new paint, I didn't have the prime or sand or strip, and it worked on pretty much every surface that I could find. So the paint was one of a kind. It was personally made for me. So yeah, that piece of furniture with black Sharpie on it, who cares? I could still take it home and fix it up. The piece that was made of something other than wood, no big deal. I'll take it, my paint's gonna stick. 
I knew it was gonna stick and I also knew it was gonna give great coverage and it meant that I could flip a couple of pieces in a day because the paint was so easy to use and quick to dry. And that's exactly what I did. I would find, flip, and send them all off to new homes over and over again. So customers started asking if they could buy my leftover paints. They saw my work and they wanted that same finish too. We were pouring our homemade paint at that time in mason jars. And after saying yes to shipping a few jars to another state, Wow, our business evolved from flipping furniture to also supplying the flippers. I remember holding my first 30 day paint a piece of furniture a day challenge. Never seen anybody do it before, but I thought it would be so fun to hold one on social media where we showed up every single day and we painted a piece and flipped it and transformed it and gave it a makeover from start to finish. And during that challenge, I connected with so many like-minded people. It was amazing. I went on to work with the world's largest online DIY community, hosting online tutorials for their millions of followers. My knees were knocking, but yes, I did it. We even held our own local events with our fellow creatives and brought in thousands of enthusiasts. Social media has definitely been a thread through the years. We've continued to do it, we love doing it, and we've done over a thousand videos and made so many friends. Now, if you watch those videos, you'll definitely see that all those windswept stages and wharves and all those colorful boats from back home, they still managed to find a way into my work because I personally love distressed, aged, time-worn finishes, and they truly feel like home. They are my favorite. Something exciting that happened this year is that we bought a van, a way to get out and meet our supporters across the country. They've supported us through all of our growth and beginnings. They've been there from the very beginning and we wanna say thank you and meet them in person. And hello, I wanna see more of this beautiful country that I now call home. So in the end, the story is way bigger than a can of paint or a piece of furniture. It's really about community, inspiring others and coming together over something that you love to do. You really can do anything that you set your mind to. If you got dreams, chase them. And the biggest takeaway lesson, the next time you change your surroundings, you just might change your life.